Hello and welcome to another episode of What's the Point, the podcast that helps you find your meaning and your fulfillment for work and daily life. And today is a truly exciting episode. I am thrilled to be joined by Adam Pipe, who I have known professionally and personally for a number of number of years. And Adam is a barrister, not someone that works in Starbucks, a barrister, not a barista, a bar barrister and specializes in immigration and human rights. But Adam, you'll introduce yourself far better than I will. Thank you for joining me. And please do give the context of your story. Now, Danny, it's, it's a privilege uh, to join you today. Part of what I do as a barrister is try and resource other people. Uh, and I've had the pleasure of interviewing you to help other lawyers and professionals, you know, focus on dealing with burnout and, and focusing on their strengths uh, and you've brought some great wisdom so it's a pleasure to be with you today um, as you can tell already i'm a proud welshman i grew up in the welsh valleys uh, first in my family to go to university where i studied law and then came to birmingham uh, to do a pupillage a pupillage is your apprenticeship as a barrister for the first six months you follow somebody around and then you're let loose on your own, doing your own cases. I think it was something like Leamington Spa Magistrates Court for my first case, so back in the year 2000. So I've been a barrister for about 24 years now and specialised in immigration, asylum and human rights law. Obviously, that's an area that's in the news all the time. It has a huge political element. Whenever you tell a taxi driver what you do, you wait for what comes next. Uh, but uh, yeah, so the law and is constantly changing because of the political pressure. It's a very fast moving area of law, which actually is something that makes it attractive. It also has a huge human element as well, representing those often who are fleeing uh, persecution or wanting to join family in the United Kingdom. Part of my role as well is what I've done is I'm very much involved in public speaking and communicating and educating people on developments in the law. So I'm, as well as my legal practice, I'm regularly involved in training solicitors, whether that's in-house, speaking at conferences, giving trainings, and these days, you know, posting on social media, providing an update on legal developments. That's probably been one of the biggest things in terms of my practice is posting on sort of social media being the go-to person for developments in immigration law so that's a bit about me adam and it's it's truly exciting to to know you but also see see what you're up to for the good of others for the good of, of humanity and that's why i was really excited to to share this podcast with you because as you know we ask some profound and stirring stirring questions but you come from such a broad and at times horrific perspective you know seeing seeing the horrors of of, mm. of humanity, humanity so thank you wholeheartedly for for joining me joining me t today um adam anything else you'd like to say on the context of, of where you come from or or should we should we go straight in no, that, that's fantastic. Obviously, we, we know each other from different arenas. I'm also about active in a sort of faith-based arena as well. We've come across each other in yoga classes. So, you know, and I'm, and, and I'm known for perhaps my habits in terms of biohacking. So we, the, everything's open to discussion today, Danny. Nothing's off the table. I know. And I think I've got my Wim Hof book just next to me that you Brilliant. recommended, Ad Adam. So and my Robert Sharma one behind me that you bought for me. So all, 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 um, all great things coming, coming together today. So as you know, I don't like to mess around. So let's go straight in, straight in, Adam. And what would you say is the point of your life? Wow, I, I know from looking at other episodes of your podcast, people are sort of, you know, that's a big, big punch to land your first question with. It, I think, in essence, you know, to. If you ever asked me to sum up my sort of mission in my life in a sentence, it would be to be the best I can and to help be other, others to be their best. So whether that's in the arena of helping other lawyers be the best they can be and provide the best service they can to other to, to clients uh, or, you know, on a personal level to help people. Uh, you know, to resource people. You talked about sending people books earlier, you know, to, to resource people to be their best. So 
to be growing to be my best and help resource others perhaps encapsulates all I do in the different arenas of my life. That is strong, Adam. To be the best you can can be and helping others be the best you best you they, they can be. That is that is a strong point mission in, in life, Adam. And then looking more broadly at, at what you what you do, the people that you are serving and empowering to be at their their best equally you know within your home and indeed you know the the legal professionals that you work in in and around broadly speaking adam at the moment what trends would you say that you're seeing within people i think obviously a, a lot of us now use covid as a reference point and we sort of be, before covid and after covid bc and a this is the new bc and ad kind of thing <laughs> You know, um, barristers are self-employed. So I am self-employed. I'm a sole practitioner. But traditionally, barristers have worked together in what's called chambers. So groups of barristers who are self-employed but work together on a collegiate basis. Uh, and uh, as when I talked about my pupillage being a trainee, you, that's where you start. You follow another barrister around. And the, very much the culture at the bar is one of, of, of learning together getting wisdom off each other, running cases by each other. And I think post COVID, even though court hearings now are largely, there are some still online, but back in person, people are less, I, I see less of my colleagues. So you don't bump into each other in chambers more. People are, tend to go do their case and perhaps go back home and have got life going on. So I think that that collegiality Perhaps that's led to, I think there is, and I've talked about this elsewhere as well, an epidemic of loneliness for professionals at the moment. I think that is a, a real challenge for people. So I, I do see that in terms of people not having those interactions and having to be more deliberate and positive to foster those human interactions where you can sort of learn together, you know, share that wisdom, you know, get wisdom from those in front of you and pass it on to those behind you as such. And, and just, just before we started this recording, I, I, I was looking at my bookshelf and a book title jumped out off my bookshelf and it was called this Leading on MT. I know a lot of what you do and your, your audience, Danny, are leaders. And I think a lot of people today a leading on empty, whether it's empty in terms of physically a bit empty, spiritually a bit empty, psychologically uh, uh, empty, uh, oh, health-wise empty. So I think people in these different arenas are, are, are leading on empty at the moment, and there's a real need to to focus on filling those different tanks in in your life. Adam, that is that is so profound. You know, leading on em empty. I'd like you know, I'll, of course, get a copy of, of of that book. That's a fantastic fantastic title but i think it really really does resonate with 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 me but also the people that i i i, I serve um and actually i i saw um some another line that really really resonated and you know you know you don't need me to tell you that we're in a social media conundrum i think mm -hmm. is the word you know it's 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 all 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 around us and and i saw something that said we're a sad generation posting happy pictures. Mm. No, it's, that, absolutely. We're, absolutely. And and I th I think there is there is this. And as, as I mentioned to you earlier, I'm actually going to begin putting on events because I'm seeing that people aren't connected enough. So I want to get people back in in person to connect with like minded like minded people on on their same journey journey so i'm i'm definitely going to do do that to bring bring people bring people together more because i i really feel that that hunger in in the people that i'm i'm working with certainly and adam you mentioned you mentioned yoga you mentioned some of your tools tools and techniques and i think did you come to one of my classes or did we do a I, I, I did yes no no when you were teaching and when we were in person i i, I was at one of your classes definitely i think that's when we first probably met in person um, and then, then you know, just so our, our viewers know, Adam probably lives all of one and a half, two miles away from away from me, right, Adam? Um, um, 
but you know you mentioned you mentioned your yoga and I, I you know i know you've done some fantastic things and you're always very generously sending me you know little nuggets or big nuggets to support support um strength but you adam pike personally what strong steps and, and habits do you have for for yourself no that's that's such a good question danny i was giving a a talk the other day and i i quoted that it's a famous quote now by James Clear that every action you take is a vote for the person you wish to become. And, and in what way are we voting with our lives and our time and our resources? You know, for me, I probably, I think in a, in a high demanding professional job, we can often, and especially when fam young family and other things going on and whether people have got children or not, married or not, we, we're all dealing with things like family illness and, and lots of pressures going on that sometimes particularly health can suffer. So I know, you know, my daughters like to remind me and show me pictures of me 10 years ago and, and, and make rather, rather disparaging comments of what I look like 10 years ago, but we can let our health go. So certainly for me, habits in terms of health uh, uh, have been something that have developed over time so we talked about yoga that that's been something that's been really helpful i'm you know i know danny you work a lot with strength based tools things like strength finders now my top strength probably not a surprise to many people is achiever you know a good day to me is to tick a lot of things off my list and to get a lot of things done uh, but so actually doing a habit like yoga, which is probably the antithesis of that, it's not about being the achiever. You know, I'm going to a class tonight where you hold poses for 30 to 50 breaths and you'll say 20 more breaths to go. And I'm thinking, good grief. And, and it's the opposite of me who wants to be hard charging, doing. And I th think something that, that takes us out of our perhaps comfort zone in terms of that achievement mindset you know, to do something else. So that, that's been very good for me. Over the last six, seven years, I, I've taken up running. Uh, I'm, if you, if you could see me in person now, I'm a short Welsh hobbit. I'm not built for running or yoga, but actually that's been so good for me. Yes, I do adopt it as an achiever. So I'm signing up for lots of things and I've just finished my first ultra marathon, which was, was very much a challenge, but really good to challenge yourself mentally and, and physically. And also during COVID, that was so good for my mental health to get outside, to get sunlight. Uh, I then got into something that people may have heard of called biohacking, sort of hacking your own health. So whether it's through good hydration, for me, there's a, a load of diabetes in my family. So giving up things like sugar. So I, I don't have added sugar in anything at, at the moment. Um, somebody told me I'd taken joy out of my life, but there we are. Um, and whether it's playing with things like cold, I found cold showers have been amazing to sort of really set yourself up for the day. Uh, I also do, if you want to take it a bit more to the extreme, things like cryotherapy. So finding these tools that help you perform at your best. So um, I, I focus there on health based, based tools. Of course, there are other things. Um, but also taking, we'll come in a minute when we talk about things like burnout to where I, I struggle, but but I think that those are perhaps things that people can take away, looking at their daily routines. What are they doing? You know, going back to that James Clear quote, what votes are they putting for themselves to develop their health, you know, in terms of the diet, exercise, mindset, but also looking at our, 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 our spiritual self, also looking at our, our, our psychology as well in, in how we think all, all aspects of ourselves. Yeah, Adam, I think that's a really powerful like, e expose of keeping yourself str strong. And, um, you know, that James Clear, Clear quote about taking action for the person that you want to you want to become and i think of course that goes for food you know and i i you know i i i love hearing and i applaud you for giving up sugar you know we're just post easter which is very high sugar time ah. so very well very well done um but equally as you well know that goes with your bra brain as, as well you know the the brain that you want to have and if you are going to spend no i don't think anyone plans to spend an hour on social media mm. It just happens. You get lost down those rabbit warrens. But is that going to help nourish your brain in the way that the way that you you want? So I, I love that you're kind of putting that putting that anchor in for our listeners. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. 
I think that's just can I come back, Danny, because you mentioned social media a couple of times. I think it's that blessing and a curse, isn't it? Because those of us who are professionals now have to and do use and social media has been a great resource for me in expanding my client base. And that is something that I use. But equally, it's recognizing that it can equally take over your life and you can find yourself scrolling Twitter on the loo and going down rabbit holes, as you say, and it, it, it's, it's holding those things in tension because these things are, you know, been very helpful in, in developing work and becoming, say, a thought leader in your profession, um, but equally recognising those dangers in it that can, that can sort of suck us in in, in that respect. Definitely, definitely. And, um, you know, yes, yeah, suck us in, but equally, you know, damage our, our, our brain, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I love the word nourishment, you know, and that for me goes, you know, every way, especially your, especially your brain as well. You know, what are you nourishing? You know, and as you, you know, this in my book, Adam, I put nonsense in, you get mm -hmm. nonsense out. If you put nonsense into your brain, it's going to, it's going to percolate on nonsense. Um, but, but anyway, Looking at looking at this, Ad, Adam, how do you avoid those personal and negative situations like burnout? Yeah, I, I said I'd come to the negatives. And I think for me, I, I've got to be honest, because a lot of people will come on podcasts and present themselves, as you said, you know, sad people posting happy pictures. We present this perfect life, you know, part of being an achiever. Um, I'm not good at rest. And I, I think uh, I know when I'm tired and perhaps sleep is my kryptonite. Not that I can't sleep. I'm, I'm, I'm no problem with that, but don't get enough. And I think when we're not rested, we can make poor decisions, both professionally and personally. So I, I think one of the big challenges for somebody like me is avoid it is recognizing when I need rest and trying to take that. Now, I, I certainly struggle with that. And you also mentioned representing people who are very vulnerable. I think lawyers have to represent, particularly in the area of law, I do things like vicarious trauma. You know, when you're representing people whose accounts are full of trauma and suffering and abuse that can affect you and you can sort of, you know, suffer sort of PTSD by proxy and you've got to recognize that. I, I, I look back to it and then a, a few weeks ago, I, I stood back and thought this week, my clients, and I, I say this very carefully, but I'd had a series of people who had nasty convictions for, for things, and that you just think, oof, you know. So it, it's 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 recognizing those those weak points. I think certainly taking time, you know, going back to incorporating things like exercise. One of the best things I, I, I've done. I've got two teenage daughters, and every evening with my one of my daughters we go out for a walk around the local area and it's so good just to get some fresh air but also to communicate because work can be so consuming and i'm sometimes conscious that your my clients probably get the best of me sometimes my family get the se second best of me uh, and, and sometimes they, there's a need to redress that balance so you know in teenage Teenage girl, girls don't want to talk to their dad very much. So actually going out and walking is a great chance to communicate. Or perhaps if I'm working from my, my home and my eldest is catching the bus to school, just that walk to the bus stop, incorporating those little, and they don't have to be big things. You know, we go back to the James Clear bit. It, it's those small little habits that, that, that accumulate and protect us from, from negative things like burnout. But also I think it's interesting for people to step back and to be cognizant of those weak points, whether for people it's rest, whether it's the type of work they're doing that can have such an impact on them psychologically and, and, and physically. So it's it's recognizing those things and then incorporating these habits uh, into life. Yes. And Adam, I, I'd like to press into that a bit mm. deeper if that's, is that okay with you? Mm. No, of course. In, in that, um, I have done a little bit work in d the domestic violence space with 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 um, one one lawyer specifically, and this lawyer actually showed me some pictures of what she was she was dealing with, and you know it's it's 
horrifying and yet also my work of course anything can come up you know I have leaders that themselves have experienced domestic violence you know addictions etc mm -hmm. anything can come up in in my work and so when you Adam are truly dealing with the the horrors of 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 humanity across all all the spectrum that you that you do how do you cope with the with the personal impact that that has potential to have on on you adam i think the first thing to say is none of us has, have got this perfectly dialed in uh, and i know there are certain cases i will do that will particularly weigh heavily upon me you know i'm not responsible for the outcome of my client's case i can all I can do is represent them to the best of my ability. And as I talked about earlier, I want to be the best I can be, partly so I can represent my clients to the best of my ability. But then the outcome of their case is ultimately out of my hands. So recognising that's not my responsibility. Sometimes it's difficult to talk about. And I think we talked earlier about having interactions with colleagues, having those who perhaps understand what your going through and what you're dealing with because sometimes you know you don't want to come home and say oh i've been dealing with this today because you know you don't want to weigh that on on other people as well but i think communication because sometimes when we just bottle these things up inside they can either explode out of us or sort of you know corrosively you know burn out of us so i i, I think you know communicating about these things but perhaps stepping back and having that perspective that these things are not ultimately my responsibility and then incorporate these physical things because I think there is that physical connection as well so perhaps that's why I'm needing to run an ultra marathon and burn these things off definitely because because I, I think you know what's that name of that famous book on trauma the body keeps the score yeah uh, and I think that there's a, a truth in that definitely Wow, Adam, thank you. Thank you for that real, you know, real and truthful, tr truthful encounter with how you how you deal with deal with the impact of, of what you're dealing, dealing mm. with. And then looking at the other end of the spectrum, Adam, when we think about success, I know we've talked about the point of your life and, you know, being the best you can and bringing out the best in others. But when when you think about success for you, Adam Pipe, what is that? What is success to you? Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because I want to be on top of my profession. Now, what, what does that mean? Because lots of people are posting their successes, as we've talked about on, on social media. For me, that's, that's being recognised as a thought leader in my industry who adds value to other practitioners. So it's not just about, you know, I'm sure lots of people who come on your podcast are successful economically, they're, they're partners in firms, they're directors, they're, they're entrepreneurs, they're people who are have the outward trappings of success. But I think to be recognised as, as a thought leader and somebody who's on top of their profession, but does it in a ethical way, and it is making a difference, but then combining other aspects because it's about keeping in balance. I've talked about sometimes my family getting second best. So, you know, success means being a, a great barrister, but then having a good relationship with my teenage kids. Uh, and sometimes those things are, are not both at the, at, at the same time. Success as a barrister means, you know, being a, a great barrister, but also keeping myself in good physical health and mental health. Yeah. And, and it's having that, that those different areas of our lives, rather than being successful at one to the neglect of others, seeing all of them together, you know, being, being successful. Wow, Adam, again, really, really honest and true. Thank, thank you. And then with understanding that you've got no crystal ball, and, and I, I love your analogy of the COVID being that kind of marker of kind of being busy. Um, I, I love that. But looking forward over the, over the next five, five years, what, what are you seeing in, in people um, over the next five years, Adam? Wow. It, you know, technology is a huge thing. And 
you know, we're seeing now the emergence of AI, and I think AI will revolutionize various industries. It's interesting to step back and think, you know, will will lawyers be necessary post AI? I, but I'm hopeful that still there is a need for people with a unique combinations of gifts and skills that it's you know as as technology grows i think people need to be carving out niches for themselves you know that they are sustainable in an ai driven world i, I it'll be interesting to see how the legal profession i'm sure some disputes in terms of commercial or civil disputes may be able to re be resolved by ai in the future i'm hoping there's a, still a need for lawyers some people might think Good riddance to them. We'll be glad to get rid of lawyers, but yeah, to have those skills that are still there to be able to uh, advocate on, on behalf of your clients. So I think, you know, it's trying to embrace the best of technology in the future, um, by but also combining those gifts within yourselves. And I'd encourage people to think, you know, what skills, talents, and abilities have I got that are still going to be necessary in a in a technology driven world and I think that's the sort of conversation that people need to be thinking of going forward great 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 Adam that's that's powerful that that is that is powerful um you know what skills talents and abilities do I need moving forward is what what what, what you've just said in this in this technology driven driven world because it's it's everywhere you know I use I use AI in my in my coaching you know and it's really it's genuinely really mm. really 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 help helping um really really good um but then looking at again the other end of the spectrum Adam when all is not going great you know with great success all is not super strong you know works really challenging you've had some some awful horrendous kick cases on things at home might not be what you want them to be when life really exacerbates you Adam what is it that keeps you going I think we need a strong sense of purpose I think that's a, a, a good place to start that when you're feeling like you're working from a place of purpose and calling now I know not everybody will be able to say that they're, they're doing that and I don't want that to be a negative thing for people but I think for me you know, I, I love what I do. That doesn't mean it's not ch profoundly challenging, but I believe it's you. It's it's I'm working within the zones of my my strengths and my my ability. So to come back to that, to have those other things we talked about already, those other aspects, those outlets in life, whether they're hobbies, pursuits, health, to have good family relationship and to nourish. You know if people are people of faith or you know uh, looking after their soul kind of thing that, that 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 is an element to their life as well so i think you know working from that place of purpose and, and if people don't feel like they're doing that perhaps it, it's it's you know they can connect with you do something like strength finders think what makes me tick what what do i when i'm doing it am i do i feel most alive you know when i'm uh, i feel most alive when i learn something and then I communicate that learning to others, whether I'm doing that in a inspirational talk, whether I'm doing it in a training for a solicitors, or I'm arguing a case in court, that, that's where my passion and strength lies. So I think coming back to working from that place of our purpose, calling, passion and strengths is probably what, what keeps me going. Good. Especially Good. when especially when Wales are getting so thrashed in the rugby all the time, that, that can't keep me going, so yeah. <laughs> And then, Adam, you yourself personally, because values within corporates, we, you know, you, you, you know, I know, often aren't lived by the corporates. Mm. But you personally, Adam, what three values would you say do you that you live by? Yeah, I think the three I'd probably land on at the moment uh, is is passion, adding value, and then keeping learning and growing. So the passion. You know, I want to do everything I do, whether it's giving a talk or whether it's representing somebody in court with with passion and passion is about energy. You know, when you communicate, there's an exchange of energy or exchange of essence. Now, you have to modulate that depending on your audience, how I would communicate in front of a judge may be different or is different to how I may be communicating a different audience and the way 
we use our passion, it, it would be appropriate to that circumstance. Otherwise, our communication will not land because we need to be communicating for people to people uh, in a way that lands with them. Otherwise, they'll they'll miss it. So if I'm not communicating in the way my judge will, will latch on to, my case is not going to succeed. But I want to do everything with passion and energy. I, I, what's that, that famous phrase about public speaking? It's a monotonous monologue from a moron to moots. And I don't want to be somebody giving a monotonous monologue all the time, you know, um, and I want to communicate with passion and, and do things with, with energy and people, you know, they may forget what, what you've said to them, but they'll remember how you made them feel by the communication of, of your energy. So do, doing that with passion. And then adding value, uh, whether it's in a personal relationship. So if I'm if I'm a friend to you, Danny, and I think, oh, there's a book or I listen to a podcast or there's a talk, I'll send that to Danny because I want to add value to people within that re relationship. And, in it, you know, I want to out generous everybody in any relationship I have. So I think that's kind of a good aim to have. And it's a, it's a relationships that are driven by generosity and add, adding value. You know, we all know those people who perhaps suck life from us and they, they try to get life from relationships. I want to be somebody who adds value, but equally on a professional level, that if somebody instructs me as a barrister, they don't just get a good barrister, but they also get something more. And whether I'm equipping them because they think, oh, I've instructed Adam, but now he's going to email me when there's a new development in the law and he'll keep me up to date. So they'll get something more out of that. So it's that you know, if, if I'm if one of my aims is to be the best I can be and to help others be their best, I help others be their best by adding value to them. But then it goes to my third one that if I'm going to be the best I can be, I've got to be constantly learning and growing. If we're not le learning and growing, we are to go back to that book title, Leading from Empty. So it, it's taking time. And perhaps this goes back to your question, Danny, about, you know, avoiding things like burnout taking time to drink from the well yourself so whether it's you know taking time myself to to make sure i'm up to date on the latest latest lead legal developments take time to use the word nourish am i reading stuff that's going to nourish my mind and my soul that i can then add value to others so i suppose those three values passion doing everything with energy adding value within relationships but then myself always learning and growing uh, throughout that so that that that's kind of my, my values well i uh, adam i i adore the one about about growing and learning because i think as as adults but particularly in the space that i work i work in people have such fixed mindsets you know often when they when they come on on board and they don't think that they they need this want this and then i i love to see those light bulbs light bulbs going off and the amount of the amount of adults grown-ups that stop learning that stop you know that lose that thirst if you like you know you talk about mm. drinking from the well that lose that thirst for growth um it's that's sad i think that it that it that is that is sad so thank you for those those extraordinary and yet brilliant values and then adam how would you say that they keep you focused keep you focused on fully living a point of your life yeah hopefully you know that that's come across that if if you know, for me, I want to be constantly growing and developing so I can be at my best. And hopefully those values inform that, that those values, you know, are in accordance with your first question is, what's the point of your life? If that's the mission of my life, my values have to be aligned to that that mission. So hopefully those values help me on my mission. Now, that doesn't say, you know, I, I want to be real in this. We that doesn't mean we don't struggle we don't mess up in relationships we don't get it wrong professionally but it's it, it's ha and you know i'm a perfectionist and sometimes as a perfectionist you beat yourself up and perhaps that you know then the way you communicate with others you can be a perfectionist with others and that's that's something to remember constantly but I, but i think it, it, it's it's having those values that 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 align with your mission so you can be constantly striving um to focus on that in living the life and becoming and you know to go back to James Clear to voting for the person you want to become 
Yeah, and you know, and, and another reference actually, Brené Brown. She does a lot in around around values, and you know what what behaviors are inside those values, and what are outside those those mm. values. And I love that you very humbly say that you know that sometimes you mess up and sometimes you get it wrong, and that that is being being human, Adam. But I you know I I, I hope our listeners can feel not just see but feel the the passion that you that you have for everything every, every area of your of your life adam so i think we're we're towards the end of the questions now adam but before we bring it into land is there anything you'd like our listeners to to hear from you or anything else you'd like to say i, I talked about learning and growing so let me um show you or, or read you something from a book i'm re i'm reading a book called uh, arete i think you can pronounce it as it's a greek word by a guy called brian johnson and the chapter i read the other night talked about self-image and it said how we behave will always be in accordance with how we see ourselves and i sort of furiously highlighted that and i just wanted to leave that with a, a as a challenge to people that our our self-image is what makes us act like we do uh, uh, and you know, I, I think that 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 challenged me the other night. So that that's if you ask me what's fresh in terms of my own learnings, it, it was that the other night. And I, 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 you know, I don't think I need to explain it any further that I'm sure it's, it's a profound thought for people to to look at that. How does my self image inform how I'm living, how I'm showing up and living my life? Just remind me of the quote again, Adam, because that is that is powerful. You're yeah. So it says how we behave will always be in accordance with how we see ourselves. How we behave will always be in accordance with how we see ourselves. I, I've, I've said it like this in, an, in other talks I've done. We live at the level of our identity. And I think that, you know, is, is such a, a challenge. So that's perhaps a, a challenge. Uh, you know, I don't want to get too, too profound on a Tuesday afternoon, but that's something perhaps that people to think on, to meditate on, to wrestle with uh, as, as they go away. Adam, I think that that is a great place to bring this bring this into land. And my question to all of our listeners is how are you seeing yourself at the moment? Mm -hmm. Adam, thank you so much for joining me on What's the Point? As you've heard, there are some ev events coming coming up in the calendar. If any of what Adam has um, spoken about resonates or if you'd like to use his phenomenal services legally then i'll um i'll of course tag him tag him in here and just a massive heartfelt thank you to you adam for all of your context contributions ideas and challenges thank you adam pipe this has been what's the point thank you listeners thanks danny